Hey guys, this is Wonderwise. Uh, just putting up a video to show a little bit about shadow tanking and uh, really just to test out my fraps, my first video, just trying to see how it all goes. Um, so this is mostly for guildies or anyone that's interested in shadow tanking. Obviously this is the uh, light armor tank on the Republic side. The mirror on the Imperial side is the assassin tank. Um, starting with the combat or the kinetic combat defense tree, uh, I'm not really going to go over the skills in depth because you can read them as you go up and they're probably going to change. Um, I'm doing this right at patch 1.1.5, so right before the big 1.2 changes, so some of this might change around. Um, I'll go over the general idea, but uh, for those of you that are talented as you're watching this, I'll call out the numbers going up the tiers. So in Kinetic Combat, you're going to go 2, 2, 3, then going from bottom to top. Then in the second tier, you're going to go 3, 0, 2, 0. Then going up, you're going to go 1, 1, 1, 2. Then going up, you're going to go 2, 3. And then in the next tier, you'll go 1, 1, 1, 0. And then the tier above that, you'll go 2, 3. And then the tier above that, you'll put in the 1 point to pick up slow time. Going over to balance, you'll go 3, 2, 0. Then in the next tier, you'll go 0, 3, 0, 2. And then uh, obviously, you know, that should finish up your points. Um, so just to point out a few highlights here. Uh, what we've done, first of all, is for, um, just to go over a few of the quality of life improvements. We've talented force speed so that it removes movement impairing effects. This will allow force speed to basically always give you the maximum buff, so that even if you get knocked back by a boss and slowed once you land, you'll be able to negate that slow and get back up to the boss in time. Also increases the length of your resilience by 2 seconds, so it's up from 3 to 5 seconds now. This is particularly useful in fights like Soa, where you have to pop the ball lightnings and resilience negates all the damage. Having 5 seconds of resilience just allows you a little bit more playtime there. Uh, one thing that we've done is we've picked up a buff called Particle Acceleration. And what this does is when you sort of, um, you, you, you kind of have a chance with uh, Double Strike to uh, proc an immediate cooldown to basically negate the cooldown on Project, um, as well as have uh, ne ne Project sort of deal uh, critical damage. Um, so that's good because critical damage helps build threat. And you'll notice that kind of throughout all the talents that we've taken, We've taken measures to increase the critical threat chance, or the critical, uh, yeah, the critical threat chance for a lot of abilities, just to help increase threat by that much more. And in fact, right up here with bombardment, we've directly increased the threat of project as well, on top of increasing its crit chance. Um, so that makes project kind of one of those high threat moves, along with slow time and force pull. Um, going to kinetic ward, this is sort of the first green spell that you pick up. This is the kind of spell that has a longer duration than cooldown, but you want it up all the time. So what that means is you really have to keep your eye on this spell, because the cooldown will be finished, assuming that all the charges, have, it's, a, it's a charge based spell, it has 8 charges. Um, so if all 8 charges haven't been used, the buff will actually stay up longer than the cooldown. This is important for force management because if you actually cast this buff every time the cooldown is done, you're going to run through force too fast. So what you have to do is, even if the spell is off of cooldown, what you need to do is check to make sure that the buff is actually gone. If it's not gone, let it stay up. Don't bother casting it again until you really have to, just so you can conserve that force. And we've taken a lot of measures to deal with force management. One of them is up here, increasing the rate of force regeneration by 30%. The other is all the way over in balance, where I've reduced the cost of double strike, but more importantly, reduced the cost of project. This takes project to being an under 44 spell, as opposed to being 45 force. Uh, and that's important because at this point, once you've talented everything, your force regeneration will be about 10 per second. So having it be under 40 ensures that you don't have to wait that one extra tick of force buildup to actually cast the project that you need. Now one thing before I go into the rotation that's critical is this spell called Harnessed Shadows. Essentially every time you cast project in slow time, you will build a stack of Harnessed Shadows that increases the damage of Telekinetic Throw by 25% and, increase, uh, and makes it uninterruptible. This will stack a total of three times. And the third, upon casting the third time, you will have uh, two, three percent of your maximum health return for every tick of telekinetic throw. This is critical be because telekinetic throw now returns a substantial portion of health, and therefore becomes actually not only a good source of sustain, but a high source of threat. 
because once you get a high enough health pool, these returns start to range between 400 and 700 health uh, per tick. So actually what you'll see is, for example, if a boss is running away from you and you're casting telekinetic throw, you actually want to hold off before you sort of panic and cast a taunt, interrupting your telekinetic throw, because odds are by the time you finish channeling the telekinetic throw, that enemy will have returned to targeting you just because of the sheer threat the telekinetic throw is able to build over the cast of the entire channel, or the duration um, of the entire channel. Uh, that's really how, how good it is as a spell. And it's, it's actually central to shadow tanking. It, it is our source of sustain, and therefore it's what distinguishes shadow tanks from the other two kinds of tanks, um, namely vanguards and Jedi guardians, uh, that don't really have a source of built-in sustain to their rotation. Um, and healers, you know, will tend to love you for this because it returns 3% of your maximum health. So it's it's the kind of heal that's always going to scale with you no matter how much, you know, how many points you have in your health pool. Uh, so going into the rotation a bit, um, you do still need to keep Saber Strike, which is your quote-unquote auto attack in there, um, just because you will, unlike other classes, be operating in the lower half of your energy reserve, which in this case is Force. Uh, the reason is that we do have that flat health, or that flat um, Force buildup that's constant at about a rate of 10 per second, which means that it really doesn't matter where you are in your Force pool, you're always going to be doing okay. This is totally counter to classes like the Trooper and the Jedi Knight, or sorry, classes like the Trooper and the Smuggler, where their resource regeneration is entirely contingent upon how much resource they have at that time. Where the more resource they have, the faster they regen, the less resource, the less they regenerate. And of course, Jedi Knights have a rage, uh, uh, you know, a rage type system that's that's contingent upon them casting spells over and over again. So. Because of that, you know, we can kind of always afford to be in the lower half of our health pool, in fact, our, our resource pool, and in fact, you'll always want to be, because the truth is that if you have excess force, the only advantage that offers you is if the boss runs away from you, you can cast a few spells really quickly back to back in the hopes that that quote-unquote burst of threat will actually bring the boss back to you. But in my experience, if you've been casting those spells constantly anyway, running down your, your force pool in an intelligent way, the boss will never run away from you to begin with. And the truth is that m more than likely, if the boss is running away from you, you're going to grab a taunt. You're not going to bother spamming project and force and all that stuff, because you'll have been doing that anyway, in theory. Um, so that's why I sort of try to establish this very fine, delicate line, where when I cast one spell, in the time it takes, for the global cooldown to finish, I have achieved just enough force to cast the next spell that I need. So I'm never actually waiting to cast a spell because I'm really carefully managing my force so that I'm always casting spells, but I only have just enough to cast the next spell that I need. And this is largely achieved by starting the pull by casting a bunch of spells back to back to back. That'll wear down your force, help you build threat in the beginning, and hold the boss to start. And then you just maintain that threat by casting a spell every time you have the force for it, as soon as it comes up. And the reason it requires a little finesse is because you obviously don't want a lot of downtime between spells, so you really have to be careful with your rotation and your timing so that you're not casting a very huge costing spell, you know, waiting for the force to build up for that, when you could have cast an equally effective lower cost spell. Um, so into the rotation, uh, like I said, Saber Strike for when those points where your, your force is a little too low to cast the spell that you need. Double Strike here and there as you feel that you need it. Project is really core to the rotation. We've talented it with several things to increase its threat, its crit chance. We even picked up the opportunity to kind of double cast it in the balance tree. So Project is important not only for its own value as a threat generating move, but also because it'll give you a cast of Harness Shadow. Same thing can be said of Slow Time. When you cast Slow Time, also building Harder Shadow, it's an AoE high threat move, and it applies a 5% damage debuff that works on bosses of any level, including Hard Mode, Nightmare Mode, bosses, and operations. So you basically always want this thing up. You want to alternate Project and Slow Time as necessary and as they come off of cooldown to build the three stacks of Harnessed Shadow, at which point you will then bust in a Telekinetic Throw. And once you cast that telekinetic throw, you'll rinse and repeat the cycle of casting project and slow time as they come off of cooldown, uh, putting in saber strikes as necessary when you're waiting, then putting up the telekinetic throw as soon as you've got three stacks of harness shadow.
Now, other than that, you know, I'll put up Kinetic Ward just to show you. This is your eight charge increased shield chance uh, little maneuver that we get. Um, and as you see while I'm talking, the cooldown for it actually finishes faster than the buff goes away. So I could cast it again now, but there's no reason to because I've got a solid three or more seconds before it actually goes away. And so if all the charges aren't used up, there's no reason for me to cast it again. Now sure, it's easier to just play off of the cooldown, but you're just going to have to train yourself to put in that little extra skill and just kind of pay attention to your buffs. It's really not that bad to do. Um, down here I've just got Forest Pull, which is one of the sort of taunts, if you will, that we picked up. It's a high threat move uh, that pulls uh, the target into you. Uh, mind Control, which is your single target taunt, and then Mass con Mind Control, which, you know, is your, is your uh, AoE taunt. Um, other than that, spells that you want to pay attention to are Mind Snap, which is your Interrupt. Anyone who's played SWOTOR for a decent amount of time um, can recognize that Interrupts are totally critical to the game. One thing we did as we were moving up the tree was we talented Spinning Kick so that it can be used when you're not in stealth, and this is unique to the tanks in the shadow um, of the shadow genre. So you can use Spinning Kick when, it, when you're not in stealth, and uh, that basically allows it to be used as an interrupt for lower tier enemies. You can't use it obviously on big bosses like so and stuff, but still good, especially for PvP as well. Um, just going over the cooldowns really quick to finish things off. Deflection is going to be your main cooldown for the most part. Um, it's, you know, on a two minute cooldown, which is not bad. Don't be afraid to use it as necessary. A uh, quick note about battle readiness. Um, it decreases the amount of time in between healing procs of your combat stance. If you recall, your combat stance every once in a while does increase damage, actually every 4.5 seconds, as well as returns health to you. That's another source of sustain for us. Well, this decreases that 4.5 seconds to 3 seconds in between those procs. On top of that, we talented it so that as soon as you use it, it'll give you back 10% of your maximum health. So battle readiness in combination with deflection are a good sort of double set cooldown to use whenever you're getting low. One will give you health to help the healers out, and the other will decrease the amount of damage you take to give your healers enough time to get you back up. And lastly, don't forget that we talented resilience to be a five second uh, lasting uh, buff so that you, know, you don't take any force or tech damage during that time. Again, absolutely critical right now, uh, largely for the cell fight. Also, I found very useful during the Garsh fight, if you just want to run through the run through the lava in between platform transitions, things like that. Anytime you can imagine uh, taking force or attack damage is a great way to mitigate all of that and help out your healers. Um, basically, that's really it. Uh, there's a, a few little tidbits here and there in terms of actually how to perform the rotation, uh, but I think you guys can largely figure that on your own. So, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to post here. Let me know what's going on. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful, and uh, I'll see you guys around. Happy hunting.